Hello, I'm Larry Kitchen, Chairman of the Visual Arts Department at Kilgore College. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about what I call the layout. In illustration, the work begins with the layout full size for the painting you're going to try to accomplish. So what I have behind me is, is a large scale oil on canvas that started as a small thumbnail sketch. Now, thumbnail sketches are just that. They're, of course, they're a little larger than the thumbnail, uh, but they start very small to generate many ideas. And then when you find a good thumbnail sketch that is a winner, then you translate that to what I call a rough layout. Now, my rough layout for this mural is right here. It started off with a line drawing, and you notice it's in proportion with the overall uh, full size of the canvas that I'll finish with. This particular one is in pencil and it's enough to show a client what your ideas are. So in this case I met with a committee, we talked about what they wanted, I showed them the layout, the pencil drawing, and then they approved it with corrections, always corrections of course. And then from that I went to a color layout, which is this second one on top. Now that method for me was to scan my pencil drawing drop it into Photoshop and colorize it very quickly. That whole process takes less than half a day. It's not, it's not a long drawn out thing. You're just dobbing colors in for a general idea of the color scheme of it. Now when I move uh, from this to this large canvas, that's a fairly complicated process, but it's not, it's not as mysterious as you might think. Basically, I create a transparency of my line drawing, shoot it up on this canvas, and get a general sketch on the surface. But that's never good enough uh, because these small sketches many times will translate to, to large inaccuracies. So at that point I begin to get my tools out and make visual measurements and adjustments. Now my tools in layout on this particular project consist of um, vine charcoal in, in a stick. Now this vine charcoal is very soft. It's much like the charcoal that you'll find in your, in your camp out after the fire's burnt the logs up. It leaves a residue and it's a, you know, it's a very dark you know, material. When, when I use vine charcoal on canvas, it goes on very easily. So I'm gonna just put a, a couple of strokes right here in this, this area of, on this guy's suit. And you'll notice that it's a good, it's a good dark line that, that lays in there. And for the layout, I might just indicate where the paint shadows are going to go. Obviously, there's going to be some shadowing under this man's arm, like so. So that's just a visual note because the dark tone of the paint will cover that up completely. So you're basically making your visual notes and making adjustments. So, so my, uh, my drawing session on, on this piece which is 15 foot across, took probably three or four days just playing around with it, toying with the dimensions, making sure I had you know, some, of the, some of the important parts uh, the, way I, the way I wanted them. And uh, so I might mention too in passing that doing art and talking is about like doing math and playing soccer. It's possible, but sometimes it's a little difficult because they're two different uh, uh, things to accomplish. So if I pause, you'll know why. Math and soccer, keep that in your mind. But at any rate, the layout uh, is done with this vine charcoal. Now, you know, if there are mistakes, the vine charcoal sits on the surface and doesn't really permeate very much. So you'll notice on my thumb, it'll come off. This is a kneaded eraser. Let me uh, put it here and the camera can sort of focus on that. The kneaded eraser is very soft and subtle and you clean it by pulling it apart and folding it back over itself. I don't know where the stuff goes, but the kneaded eraser gets lighter. Sometimes I think maybe it just transfers it to your fingers, but at any rate, you'll notice this went from kind of a smudgy gray to a light gray object. Now, this kneaded eraser will pull off most of your charcoal without too much trouble. So that's a, that's a very nice tool. So if I decided, okay, I don't like that shadow, I'll just pull it off and then go right back to uh, you know, making whatever, whatever shadow shapes that, that I want underneath that, underneath that arm. 
So the kneaded eraser, very good tool. Now we can also use uh, harder erasers like this Magic Rub. This is just an example of a vinyl uh, hard eraser that you might want to use. The, the harder erasers are for the harder leads. So if you're using a leaded pencil like this HB that would make a little bit harder, you know, sharper marks for you, then you'd probably want a Magic Rub around it, it won't completely take it off of this canvas, but it'll, it'll lighten it up to a point where you can't see it with paint on top of it. So a couple of erasers are very handy to have, and pencils or charcoal will allow you to, to do your layout on, on the surface. Um, if you don't want your pencils to smudge or show at all, then use a hard lead. Hard leads are H designation, they go up to H9. Um, which would, if you pointed at H9, that could be a deadly weapon. It's so hard. Uh, very seldom dulls. And then as you come down, in the center is H and HB, and then the Bs are the soft lead. So Bs go up to about six before they're nearly impossible to use because they break all the time. So if you want good, rich darks, then use the B side of the designation. If you want hard, sharp, crisp lines that are very light, use H. Or